Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? The CEO of a company called SalesX reached out to me and asked if I could build a custom high-end chessboard that's branded with their company logo. SalesX are specialists in digital online marketing. This is a pretty high-end board. It's made from ebony and boxwood. Just to give you an idea, ebony is 10 times the price of walnut. So let's get started. So I have these two pieces of ebony and that's enough to make the chessboard and the frame. I'll run the pieces through the jointer to get one side flat and straight. and then I'll turn it on its edge as well. And then with that straight edge, I can run it through the bandsaw. The frame is going to be three inches wide, so I'm cutting this to be roughly three and a half inches. And that piece that's left over is perfect for making the chest pieces. And then I'll slice it down the middle so that I have enough wood for the entire frame. The squares are going to be two and a quarter inches, so I'm cutting this to be about two and a half inches. And this is ten quarter ebony, so it's large enough to get two and a quarter inch squares out of it. And now I'll cut this into four slices, and each slice is about a half an inch thick. And that's a little thicker than you would normally need, but I want to have the, the playing surface to be elevated above the frame, so that's why they need to be a little bit thicker. Between each cut, I ran the board through the jointer to flatten the face again. Um, I just didn't show that on camera. And now it's time to work on the boxwood. So I'm cutting this large piece of boxwood to length. And this leftover piece will be perfect for the chest pieces. I'll use one of the ebony pieces to set the thickness. And the boxwood is not quite as thick as the ebony was, so I will not be able to get four slices, and that's why I have two pieces here. Mm -hmm. 
And just like with the ebony, I'm running the boxwood through the jointer between each cut. I have a piece of MDF sitting on top of two of my clamping fixtures and this will provide a good surface area for the first glue up and it also provides a good mechanism for clamping everything. After the glue has cured, I run this through the drum sander and then I can move over to the table saw and cut the individual squares. This is going to be a double-sided chessboard, so I'm cutting 16 of these strips. Now I'm back at the clamping fixture and I have a piece of plywood that I've cut to be one inch larger than the squares. So the piece of plywood is 19 inches, the squares add up to 18 inches, and that leaves a half inch overhang all the way around. You'll hear my CNC machine running in the background throughout this video because I'm working on another project at the same time. I have these calls that I've made with a half inch rabbit and that provides the, the perfect call for clamping to make sure everything gets lined up and is square to the plywood. And it's really important to clamp not only horizontally, but vertically. And that's where the clamping fixture comes in really handy. After the glue has cured, I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side.
Now I'm cutting some strips of curly maple and this will be inset into the frame and act as a border that goes around the playing area. Next I'll cut the ebony to length. The frame is going to be 24 inches by 24 inches, so I cut this probably to be 24 and 3 quarters inches or something close to that so that I have a little bit of excess to trim off when I cut the miters. Now I'm cutting the rabbit that the border is going to be inlaid into. And I'm cutting the rabbit on both sides of the frame, again because it's a double-sided board, so there's a frame on both sides. I can make the test cut on the actual frame piece because the first couple of inches of the frame are going to be cut off with a miter anyway. Next I want to make sure that the edges of the playing area are perfectly straight, so I'm trimming off just a tiny little bit around the perimeter. I'm also trimming the thickness of the plywood uh, because the frame is only about 7 eighths of an inch thick and the plywood is 3 quarters of an inch, so that doesn't leave a lot of wood on the top and bottom, so it helps to make the plywood a little bit thinner. Now I'm trimming the edges of the borders. And then I'll cut the frame to be three inches wide. Next with my dado set I'll cut a groove in the outer perimeter of the frame and this is where the edge banding will sit. And then I'll flip the frame pieces over and cut the groove that will fit over the plywood. And I intentionally cut it a little bit small so that I could sneak up on the fit. Now watch for this power blip. Did you see it? That caused my table saw to shut down, and that's because there's a big storm outside. The nice thing about having a magnetic switch on the table saw is that the saw will not start back up automatically. 
it's only like 7 p.m. in the middle of August, so it should not be this dark normally. Now that the storm is over, I'll resume the cut and get it to fit over the plywood. Next, I'll cut the pieces for the edge bending. While the glue is curing for the edge banding, I can start the work on the CNC to create the algebraic notation and the SalesX logo. I'm cutting the maple as a mirror image so that it can be inlaid into the frame. trim off the edge banding and then I can cut the miter joints. And I typically cut the frame pieces to be about an eighth of an inch longer than they need to be and then I can sneak up on the fit. Next I'm marking the frame pieces to know which one will have the rank, which one will have the file, and which one will have the SalesX logo. And then I can carve those out on the CNC. While the CNC is working, I can cut out the male portions of the inlay.
After booming up, I can cut off the excess portion of the inlay and then run it through the drum sander to clean it up. I'm going to use mortise and tenon joinery for the miter joints. So I'm marking the positions of the tenons and then I can cut the mortises using my router. After the CEO of SalesX reached out to me, I went to their website to see what the company did. And it's interesting, they're specialists in online digital marketing, but they're unique because they've got technology and owners of the company helped build the Google Ads back end. So they have the technology, the know-how, and the sales knowledge to help their clients crush the competition. This is not a sponsored video, but I found SalesX to be an interesting company, so it may be worth taking a look if you're in the market for that type of a service. It's a good idea to clamp the corners vertically and that gets them as flat as possible to minimize the amount of sanding that has to be done after the glue up. I'll use a chisel to clean up some of the glue that's squeezed out. There was a little defect in one of the squares and a perfect solution for that is the Starbond black CA glue. Uh, just pour a little bit of that into the crack, spray it with the accelerant and then sand it off. The color of the SalesX logo is red, so the client wanted me to have red notation and a red logo inlaid into the board. And the way that I'm going to go about doing that is by using a mixture of denatured alcohol and some red dye, and then I will hand paint the dye onto the inlay and the logo. 
according to the instructions for this trans tint dye, it says to use 16 drops per ounce, and I'm using a tablespoon of denatured alcohol, so that's a half an ounce, so I have eight drops total. The color of the dye was not very vibrant on this first pass, but I did this, I think, five times to get it dark enough. And now with the final pass of the dye, the color is much more vibrant. Another little defect that I saw in the frame, so it's another application of the black CA glue to fill this. It's a really quick and easy solution for little voids like this that need to be filled. And that void is now gone and undetectable. I've put a link in the description if you'd like to pick up some Starbond CA glue for yourself. I have a 16th inch round over bit in my trim router to nicely ease the edge. A little bit of sanding, and then it's ready for a finish. And for the finish, I'm using a pre-catalyzed lacquer. And in this case, I did not use anything to seal it. I just used the lacquer itself as the sealer, the first coat. And then I put four more coats on top of that. The sales ex CEO told me that he likes to pay once and get the best, which is why he wanted me to make this chessboard. Kind of like if you buy quality, you cry only once. And similarly, their digital ad services are the best for businesses who care about the highest quality systems, workmanship, and results. And I'm just finishing up the first chess piece. If you want to see how I make these chess pieces, you can click on the link above. And here's another use of the Starbond CA glue. It makes an excellent finish for chess pieces. Here are some photos of the board. If you want to see more photos, you can click on the SalesX link in the description.